Hello, my name's Jenny and I work in Library Services. Today I'm going to read you a couple of paragraphs from the book The Wild Places by Robert McFarlane uh, from the chapter Forest. The deep wood is vanished in these islands. Much indeed had vanished before history began, but we are still haunted by the idea of it. The deep wood flourishes in our architecture, art and above all in our literature. Unnumbered quests and voyages have taken place through and over the deep wood and fairy tales and dream plays have been staged in its glades and copses. Woods have always been a place of in-betweenness, somewhere one might slip from one world to another or one time to a former. In Kipling's story, Puck of Pook's Hill, it is by right of oak and ash and thorn that the children are granted their ability to voyage back into English history. There is no mystery in this association of woods and other worlds, for as anyone who's walked in woods knows, they are places of correspondence, of call and answer. Visual affinities of colour, relief and texture abound. A fallen branch echoes the deltoid form of the stream bed into which it's come to rest. Chrome yellow autumn elm leaves find their colour rhyme in the eye ring of a blackbird. Different aspects of the forest link unexpectedly with each other and so it is that within the stories of forests, different times and worlds can be joined. Woods and forests have been essential to the imagination of these islands and of countries throughout the world for centuries. It is for this reason that when woods are felled, when they are suppressed by tarmac and concrete and asphalt, it is not only unique species and habitats that disappear, but also unique memories, unique forms of thought. Woods, like other wild places, can kindle new ways of being or cognition in people, can urge their minds differently.